And on two wheels this week, I meet Simon. He's a member of the Street Fighter Owners Club and he rides a TL1000. Later, Wayne visits a scooter open day near Wigan. But first, Jeff rides a machine which is a true mix of Japanese power and Italian style. Now, have you noticed there's a bit of a trend these days towards what I'd call attitude bikes? You've got Yamaha's phenomenal phaser, you've got the good old Suzuki Bandit, you've got Harley's Big Buell, you've got Triumph Speed Triple, but now you've also got this, Kajiva's V-Raptor. It's certainly attention-grabbing, a sort of praying mantis meets Mad Max, an alien bike, not of this world. Or is it simply a different spin on the monster concept? Well, it's not surprising because it was styled by the same guy who styled Ducati's Monster. But first, I'm going to take this jacket off. It's one of those rare, nice days, this is. And so, look, you're not going to be surprised down here. See this trellis frame? Very similar to the Monster. Bigger tubes, big and beefy, but you can see the sort of styling cue off there. But the engine's not Ducati, it's a Suzuki, and it's the TL1000S, the big V-twin motor. And see down there, it says Kajiva. Well, don't believe it, that's just a bit of badge engineering. It's all Suzuki in there. Inside, though, there are a few changes. The motor's retuned for more torque with slightly lower power, but it still gives out 98 brake horse from the fuel-injected motor. And it spreads it over a very wide rev range, meaning it happily pumps out loads of V-twin grunt, taking you to 140 plus if you can hack it than if you're hard enough. Because this, down here, is not a fairing. It's a little nose cone, mounting the headlight, obviously, mounting the indicators either side, and the speedo and all the rest of it. And see these big sort of insect antennas up the top here? Carbon fibre look, but it's not carbon fibre, it's plastic textured. And they're not air tubes, as a Kawasaki used to be. They're purely for decoration, give you that sort of styling cue on there. And then also, this sharp edge styling from the front here, because it's all about style, this bike is. See these edges? It's this modern edge styling that they use on the Ford Focus and a few other cars. And the uh, Aprilia's Futura. And it comes along the edge there. The tank is shaped like that as well. The tail's similar, so it's all on the edge. But if you look at it from a rider's point of view, where I'm sitting now and looking down, look at that strange rev counter up there, triangular shaped thing, but again, that edge styling. But it looks sort of 1930s, doesn't it? Beneath it, though, you've got some modern technology, little digital display there, gives you the speedo and a couple of uh, trip counters, also the oil temperature. And up above there, you've got the normal idiot lights for the uh, fuel and ignition and, uh, and all the rest of it. Coming back on the bars, very, very wide bars, wide and flat and quite a nice aggressive feel to them and decent mirrors. They don't vibrate either, but you get it, even though this has got this edge triangular styling, you've got a good vision at the back there and you need it. Nice tree I can see over there. But look at this tank. Looking down on the top of it, it's very wide at the front, and the important thing is it's all plastic, so no good for a tank bag, but again, one of those plastic tanks with some neat mouldings in it, and that's what you can get away with in plastic. But it's not all style and no substance. As I've said, the engine is Suzuki's well-proven lump, and it comes complete with a slick six-speed gearbox too, and it's got a tad lower gearing than the TLS so it certainly motors. Punching out of corners and short shifting, it really does feel alive. And all this is going on in a very competent chassis. Nothing exceptional, but it does its job well. The suspension itself is non-adjustable, except for the rear preload, so it might feel a bit soft to some, but in the real world, it copes fine. Now, as you might have noticed, this looks a pretty low bike, and it is, well, at least seat height-wise, because it's 770 mil. Now, that's 30 mil lower than a Monster, and it's a whole 50 mil lower than Yamaha's new 1000 Phaser. And when you think, this is a 1000 bike as well. So, uh, I thought it might be a little bit cramped for me. Six foot two on this. I thought, how am I going to wrap myself around this? But look, it's not bad. The footrests are reasonably well back. The angle of the leg might look a bit acute, but it doesn't feel it. And with these bars, you tip slightly forward, so it's quite comfortable. You're into the breeze there. It gives a nice feel to it. What else have we got on it, Mike? Get the old stand down. Down the front end, we've got the good old Brembos. We're so familiar with these, aren't we? Brembos, 298mm discs, got braided hoses, which is a nice touch on it. 
Nothing special here, engine and radiator and all the rest of it. But see these little styling cues continuing through the bike. I reckon if Batman had a bike, he'd probably have one of these. See all these little spikes here? And look at these beneath the pillion footrest. See those little spikes? Looks very, very odd. There, while I'm here, carbon fibre, genuine carbon fibre there, wrapping both silencers. But this seat, talking about the pillion rests, it is in fact the dual seat. This cowl, which I won't take off now, it's only a couple of pins underneath. Under the pins, take off this cowling here with this bump stop. And so you've got a proper dual seat there, and your pillion passenger perch there. But I'll tell you one of the neatest things that I like on this styling-wise, there's nothing extravagant about this, is this swinging arm. It really does look a work of art. Call me a bit sad, anorak-wise, but look at that. It's a beautiful job. Nice little plate there to protect the finish on the swing arm. And look at that end cap there, just as there. Really neat. What's also neat is that it's relatively light at 192 kilo. That's the same as a monster, but it's lighter than the phase of Thou or a speed triple. So if you want to be different and you're into radical styling, then here it is. And at £7,149 on the road, it's got the added attraction of being just about the cheapest litre bike you can get. OK, it's time for another modified bike. But another bike this week that doesn't look that modified on the face of it. Simon is the owner of this, TL1000. Uh, it doesn't look that modified, Simon, except it makes hell of a racket. <laughs> it does make a rather lot of noise, it, yes. A lot of noise, a <laughs> tremendous crack it makes, because this... Tell me about your exhaust. Uh, I had it made by Scorpion. It's a high-level system, uh, made to order, with... Um, I don't like all the carbon fibre bits and bobs on it, I must admit, so right. I like a bit of shine some, in places. So, I like uh, a bit of noise as well. Well, I've always been, anybody who knows me know, knows that I like a lot of noise. So. They, they know you're coming as well with that. A, yeah. Any bike yeah. I have has got to have a loud exhaust on it well, straight that's, away. That's loud, it really is. So, <laughs> so, I mean, that's the obvious thing that you, you, you see when you look at it, that, that you know it's not standard. What else have you got on here that's, that's not standard? Uh, well, starting from the back, really, I suppose. I mean, the, the swinging arm has been uh, modified, been deep braced. Uh, um, by Matchamex. Yeah. Um, it's a, the original swinging arm. Um, I've just had a deep brace put on it, to be honest with you. Right. Um, the, these are homemade by myself. Yeah? Yeah. Very nice. Um, because I didn't like what was on the market at the time, so I thought, bugger it, make me own. Yeah, well, why not? That's yeah. it. Um, we have various rear sets on it, which are a little bit tight, but uh, they're spot on. Yeah. And. On the front end, really, I mean, all we've really done, to be honest with you, is the original four pot calipers that were on the front weren't really up to the job. Right. So I've put six pot calipers on and also altered the master cylinder. But let me ask you about the handling on it, because I, Jeff, my colleague, and I, we test rode a couple of these when they first came out. Yeah. And we loved them. Yeah. We had one that was standard and we had one that was um, been uh, fettled, if you like, yeah. by uh, Maxton, Rob yeah. Williams at yeah, Maxton. Yeah. And what he'd done is he'd changed the rake angle and everything. Yeah. But everybody says they don't handle. They twitch, they tank slap. Well, tell me about it as an owner. Uh, well, I've had it since it was about four months old when I had it. Um, and the rest of the time, I've never found a problem with it. I mean, right. most of the time, to be honest with you, it's normally vertical anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, uh, you, you st you've still got to see the uh, the ro this rotary rear damper, which was a kind of a unique thing when when this first came out. Yeah. No problems with that. No, I haven't really had a problem with it apart from uh, I put a um, an aftermarket hugger on it and found it was on long journeys and especially on uh, winding and twisting roads like a run to Matlock or something like that, where you're giving it quite a bit of uh, welly. Yeah. It, uh, you could feel the handling going off on the back end. Really? Yeah, so I removed that and left it just open, like, so, so there's plenty of cooling around it. That was because it didn't allow the, the rotary damper to cool? Yeah, so I don't, I don't, I'm not over enamoured, to be honest with you, with the uh, rotary damper system, no. but the rest of the bike, I love to pieces. Yeah. I think it's a great bike. Uh, are you going to do anything else now? Um, I think what we're going to go is for a bit more on the engine. Um, yeah. I'm toying with the idea of having a power commander put in it. <laughs> and get a bit more uh, more out of it. It might make even more noise then. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you can get much louder, can you? I don't think the you can. The cans are just there for, uh, just for effect, really. Yeah. I mean, they don't seem to do a lot. I don't think they do anything to <laughs> And after the break, our very own Mod Wayne visits a scooter open day in Wigan.
Well, I've asked myself this question. Why would several hundred scooter folk, scooter enthusiasts, travel the country to come here, to Wigan? Wigan, oh, well, I reckon it's probably become for them famous mint balls. Maybe not, maybe the pies. Could be that fancy new football stadium they've just built. I know what it is, of course, it's the famous Wigan Pier. Well, actually, it's none of those, no. They've come on an open day, to an open day, I might say, an open day at ESP scooters in Wigan. And it's the home of Eric Tudor, who happens to be the bloke who you can buy every conceivable bolt-on bit and piece for your scooter, old and new. So they come along and they buy a few bits at a bargain price with a bit of luck. And also, they then have a little drink, soft and alcoholic, if they're not riding the scooters, of course, have a play on the bouncy castle. That's, of course, if they're under the age of 12 and they take the shoes off, they can have a burger, all free of charge, or a hot dog. It's great, it's just generally a fun open day. You can't come to an event like this and not talk to the man who's behind it all. This is Eric Tudor. Now I know you run what I would describe as a scooter shop, but not a scooter shop as in like you buy a new one and you sell a new one, you create them, you build yeah. them, and people come along and buy them off you. But you've run this event today. What yeah. possesses you to attract several hundred people and supply them with several hundred burgers? Oh, well, when you've been in foot scooters as long as I have, I mean I've been in it since I was 12, so it's a way of life with me. And like you put these events on once a year for appreciate the people what come in your shop buying because after all they pay your wages. Great. So in other words, it's like a word of thanks. Yeah, yeah. Great. You put it on free burgers, free ale. They can come down, meet other people. They get get no different people, and we have a bit of a do on at night as well. So. Oh dear. It, yeah. So well, it, you didn't invite me to that. Is there a reason for that? <laughs> oh, no, not really. <laughs> Slip me mad of in that visit. Oh yeah, thanks. But, yeah, yeah. But. Uh, you know, it's just for a put back for something what we're taking out. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I think it's a very good reason for doing it. I think very few people do it, and it's I admire you for it. But I mean, it, everyone's talking about you, about the the stuff you supply them with. I, I needed a such and such a mat. I couldn't get one. I spent eight years looking for it, but Eric got me one. I mean, where on earth do you get all your blinky stuff from? Well, you know, when you're going on holiday. You'll probably be one of these people I uh, lie down on a sunline. Oh, you know me well. Right. They well, often I'm drag not, me back into I'm not. Right? I, I never lose this, you see. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just keep going into different shops and everything, see if they've got out, and if they've got it, I'll fetch it back with me. Right. So all these little perks, what I do get, it's because I go abroad, not for an holiday, actually to uh, scavenge Does perks. Does wife know that when you tell her, oh, oh she, hates, holiday, she like. hates me for me. She hates it for me. Like, <laughs> well, hates me for doing it. Yeah, like, well, I can like. understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no matter where I go, I'm always... On the, on the lookout for And stuff. it's a family thing, this, I know, because your yeah. lad's cooking the burgers and the girls are running around opening the buns yeah. and everybody's chipping it. Yeah, well, my family, as in my dad and, my, and the, they was all into scooters, yeah. so it's like just come down, all my family, even my little girl, what's seven, like, she's yeah. well into it, you know, yeah. she's got two scooters she's of her own. She's not choice, has she? Really? No, well, no, not really. And your no. Stacey's got that lovely silver, is it? Yeah, uh, GS, yeah. yeah. She yeah. won't let me on it. Is it you know? No, she'll not even let me on it, and I built it for her. She was the first to drive it. She, well, honestly, she won't let me go on it. But the keys are in it, actually. I was surprised uh, she let fan on it that time. Yeah, it's amazing, yeah. isn't it? That's but it. nonetheless, I think what you're doing is great, um, and, and, and obviously, you're, presumably, your plan is to do it every year. Yeah, we do it once a year, yeah. Because there'll be a lot of people that come to this, will be so, they'll, they'll be sick as a chip if you didn't invite them back the next year. Well, I don't invite them. You know, <laughs> it's up to them. They're, yeah. they're more than anybody bikers. I mean, we have a lot of bikers that come as well. There has been bikes here today. Yeah, that's Anybody's true. welcome. It's just a, a fun day. Balloons, boats of castle, face painting, whatever you, we could think of, we'll do it for the kids and that, you know. Yeah, so yeah. it's a family atmosphere, it's not like, you know, all men are all women, it's it's a really family do like. Excellent, well we won't keep you anymore, because there's oh. people queuing up there for bits and pieces and you're the one who knows what well, fits I'm, what, I'm, I'm where going, it goes. I'm going queuing up for some burgers now. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. do you think you need it? Oh well, no, no, yeah, no, yeah. No, I've, no. I've sweated in there today, so I'm going to have a burger. That's your well, nice one yeah. on it, thanks very much, mate, cheers. Bye.
So I did say there was some serious uh, scoots here for us to have a look at, and this is certainly no exception. What is very evident is the paint job. Now, Carl owns this scoop, but I do know he didn't actually paint it. But nonetheless, it is a credit to you. But you've done everything else, haven't you? Yeah, everything else. Built it from scratch. All I got was a paintwork as it was. Yeah. Was, so it, was it a bit of a mess when you got it then, the original no, it was, scoop? Well, no, originally it came just the panel work yeah, and the right. frame. And then everything yeah. else I've had to want down and build it from there. Right then. And, and, and you're obviously an enthusiast then. Is this yeah. a, a rekindled enthusiasm or a, a lifelong friend? Well, I've been doing scoops? it for that since I was 15. Yeah. And I had a break off when I got married. A few years off, then got back into it. And you love so, it, obviously. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's a lifestyle thing, is this scoot life? Well, it is, it? and it's a way yeah. of life. But I mean, something like this, to me, deserves to be a, a pride of place in the lounge at home, polished, untouched, under spotlight. But you love it so much, you ride it all the time. Oh, yeah. It's like I say, why pay X amount of pounds like to build them to sit them in your garage all weekend? Well, I'll give you that. Well, I agree I mean, with you fair that. play, I do keep it in the dining room. Do, do you yeah, really? Keep that it, in where the it, house. Lives? it lives in the house. Lives in my dining room. That's, yeah, I suppose most men say that they go to bed with the bikes and the scoops. Well, your next best thing is you take it for a meal yeah. every now and again yeah. and stick it in the dining, in room. dining room. Now, this is a credit to John and Lillian Banks here because not only is it beautiful, but you can see it's beautiful, it, uh, it's actually started life naked. And then you found everything to go on it, John. Tell us a bit about it. That's right. It took, took about eight years. It started off as a standard Lambretta 150. And it's upgraded now with a bigger engine in it, more powerful engine, and just about every accessory that you can possibly find. Well, I'd agree find. with you there, fine, yeah, uh, yeah. A lot of chroming work and a lot of searching and travelling around finding rare bits and bobs over the years. A um, lot of pleasure, presumably, doing that. A lot of that. pleasure. Yeah, you meet a lot of friends doing yeah. that, yeah. We yeah, go to the Isle of Wight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, um, we know the people. Who sell See, most people have gone down to the local accessory shop and say, I'll have one of them. No, no, and they, no. But you can't do that, can you? No, you, yeah. you can't. No, yeah. it's, yeah. it's really rare stuff. In places like it? Eric's. Oh, yeah, yeah. stores yeah. like this, whereby yeah. obviously but someone like, they know so much about what they're doing, don't they? You can yeah. say, I want such and such a thing. And to my surprise, amongst that lot in there, which is just a, a, a hovel, it pulls out, that's what you want, isn't it? It oh, amazes yeah. me. Yeah. That's but that's right. because you guys, yeah. like Eric and like you guys, you know what you're doing. That's right. Does that knowledge come from just of recent or is it accumulated over years? Well, no, I did have a lot of knowledge in being an original mod uh, from about 1965. I was really into the scooter scene then uh, and I knew exactly how they looked from original, so I'd got that blueprint, if you will, yeah, having yeah. Owned, the, owned them the first time round, so yeah. I knew exactly what I was looking for, but I'm still learning now it amazes me even now that this stuff that i can find that, that uh, i hadn't even seen in the 60s right yeah. so i'm still learning and the wonderful thing about tiggers is this tigger didn't paint it but tiggers a member of the artwork on it mark tell us a bit about this because it didn't start live quite like this did it no it was a green uh, a green t5 and uh, got knocked off august bank holiday weekend drunk driver so i decided to strip it all down and rebuild it and the wife's a mad tigger nut so that's where the theme come from all ah, right and that's what it is so she's part of that instigation the yeah. tigger bit uh, the, uh, the i don't want to linger on the horrible thought of you being knocked off but like they rebuilt you've rebuilt the scooter yeah. and done an absolutely fantastic job yeah. of it. what about yourself did you sustain an injury at yeah i brought my collarbone and i brought my shoulder but uh, previous to that i got knocked off in 85 and i brought me back and my tib and fib as well on a scooter hang on a minute here mark now just run this by me you're still enthusiastic to go riding them but you've had these things yeah so obviously you must be passionate about it all i can't explain to people what it's like i suppose a drug addict would understand is that right it's yeah. really as oh, addictive yeah. as that is oh, it oh yeah is it it's the lifestyle the people oh yeah everybody people. You never yeah. meet better people yeah. Wherever you go, somebody wants to talk to you. Yeah. Somebody wants to be your friend. Somebody wants to know where you're from. It is true to say that amongst uh, scooter people, there's no Billy No Mates, is oh, there? No. Everybody will no. chip in and help each no. other out. Everybody is everybody's mate. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. Well, tell us a bit more about this now then. Is it standard in every other way apart from the artwork then? It's uh, a P2 frame. Uh, it's uh, a T5 engine with a, a Molossi kit. It's got a 21 tooth Corsa clutch and it's been uh, objetted with a PM exhaust. Oh, we're some top spec then. Yeah. So it'll go quite well, oh, obviously. Yeah, it'll stop all right, because yeah. you're not a slight of a ladder, you're no, early, you know. Got good brakes, yeah. It? Gives yeah. Tigger the bounce. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. There we are, look at that. Nice bit of artwork there from the Salford Scooter Club, the Salford Knights. Phil, just turn around and tell us a bit about this here 
scooter yours because you've just won a trophy, haven't you? What's the, what's the trophy for? Uh, best Lambretta. Best Lambretta. Yep. And very deserved as well. It's beautiful. Have you uh, done the job yourself? No, oh, it was done for me by a uh, yeah, guy in Rochdale. Uh -huh. um, it's done a real good job. It's an original 1967 right. SX200. Yeah. As you can see, it's been fully restored. Yeah, so, well, it's uh, beautiful. Have you owned it for very long then? I've had it a year and a half now. Yeah, and yeah. Do, you, do you ride it regular? I, I ride it regular, yeah, yeah, dead regular. I use it for work every day and everything. Do you know, that's something I've noticed now. People have got these fantastic scoops and everything. Yeah. Customised and mirrored up, and in this case, all original. And you use them on a daily basis. Oh, yeah, well, there's no point, you know, I buy it to use. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's no point just putting it in a van, taking it to a show. You're not going to tell me even if it's chucking down, you know? Oh, aye. Oh, all through the winter, mate. You must spend hours cleaning it then. Well, that's it. The wife goes mad. Does she? She doesn't see me. She doesn't see her. Oh, My no. wife would be over the moon with me if I got one of these then. <laughs> right. So, are you proud of your trophy? Very much. It's have you won others? Have you... I've got four now. Have you now? Yeah, all for the same sort of thing. Best Lambretta. Yeah, yeah. Best, best uh, Lambretta one. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. And this, this club you're a member of then, what do you do? Go on rallies? And we runs? go rallies every Sunday. We always have ride outs. Yeah. Go all over the place. I'm excellent. off to Tembe soon. All yeah. the way down to Tembe. On this? On this. That's 200 mile there, 200 mile back. I hope you've got like an extra sponge for the uh, seat there. I, <laughs> I mean, my seat's fairly sponged already, you know. Well, got, you, you get a hard arse. Is that what you do? Yeah, you get a hard arse. Immune actually. to these. You're yeah, immune to it. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Nice one, mate. Well All done. Right, thanks, mate. Right, right. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks a lot. And on Two Wheels next week, normally famous for riding his trendy scooters, we let Wayne loose on a real motorbike. Wow.